All right, what's up, everyone? This is Sam, coach of your Great Lakes Grim Snarls, and today I am here to finally uh, re-record the Frogadier Pigeon uh, Division uh, PRs for GLDL Season Two. Um, I'm going to be doing a very different format this time around. Um, I am obviously, you know, I'm not using my slides because I wanted to because it has taken me so long to get around to these. Um, I am doing more of a, um, mid-season look, uh, this is all the week three matches have now been played and submitted, um, so all these stats and trades, all the stats are going to be effective, or, uh, basically leading up to week four, accurate, and all the trades are also all of the, uh, the week three teams, so none of the trades going into effect for week four have been put in yet, so... We're looking at the teams as they are during week three. And basically, um, I'm just trying a different format here. On top of that, um, I'm also going to be doing these little ratings. Um, I, I kind of stole this idea from uh, my good buddy Wade, El Flamingo. Um, but yeah, so we're just going to go through alphabetically here, and I'm going to kind of give ratings on all of these uh, general areas um that are in my opinion important on a team i know these aren't all of them i know some of these are more important than others but we're going to get it we're going to give all of these uh scores out of five and then we'll have a total score and then at the end we'll we will rank all of them and we're also going to um attempt it's it's sometimes kind of hard because i haven't watched every single frogadier game yet um it's kind of hard to do this a hundred percent but Using these broad and KD statistics here, as well as looking at, we'll look at the kill leaderboard at the end. Um, my goal is to uh, analyze kind of how teams are being used, and uh, maybe you know, and that kind of thing will probably affect things like power and general vibe of points. Um, so without further ado, we're going to start off with the Alexandria Arcanines, coached by Dan. Um, so you can see his team here, Titar, Aegis Slash, Drake, Zolt, Zapdos, Galar, Azelf, uh, Mashana, Klaatzer, Lorantis, Perloin, Togepi, Glalie. So I have watched, I think, two out of three of Dan's games. Um, I, can, I can start off by saying Perloin is phenomenal here in Tier 4 as well as Togepi. Um, I think the low tier values here of Klaatzer, Lorantis, Perloin, Togepi, and Glalie is huge. Um, I know he brought Scarf Glalie against Gumi in, I believe, week two, um, maybe week three, and just kind of swept with it, um, or did very well with it. Um, as you can see, Tyranitar is at a whopping 10 kills, one death. Um, it's been putting in a ton of work for him. I think it, I think one week it took like, it took like half HP from a Rotom Wash Hydro Pump or something ridiculous. Um, so that's really, really good. Um, obviously the Titar Dracozolt, uh, core is super solid, um, and then on top of that, you know, they share a ground weakness, they share an intimidate weakness, which is then supplemented by Zapdos Galar, um, being immune to ground, as well as Azelf being immune to ground, um, and so the general, or, and then, uh, Defiant, obviously, scares away Intimidate, um, the general power output of this team is really high um you know you have you know crazy offense stats on Aegis Slash um Dragozil hits like a truck with Bolt Beak um you know 125 125 one, 134 140 uh even like Lurantis at 105 Klotzer with 120 uh special attack uh Mosharna with 107 I did not realize it that was so high um yeah, I think this this team the te the power level here is gonna be like probably a four out of five. Let's see type coverage. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, like looking, the fairy weakness I will say is rough. Um, does he have? Yeah, he does have wide guard, so. He, his team isn't going to get, like, de-gleamed down as easily because of Aegis Slash. Um, 
but the fairy weakness is rough, uh, and he can, and he only has Aegis Slash to deal with it, which I think is okay. Aegis Slash is really good. Um, I'd say type coverage is probably also a four, or maybe a three. Um, the obviously like the standard type cores aren't really here. Um, which obviously isn't necessarily a, a bad thing. Um, no fire type. Yeah, I, I wish there was like, honestly, I think the team wouldn't mind a fire type uh, to deal with, to at least take hits from fairy types. Because only having one resist, I feel like, is rough. Um, so I'll maybe give a 3 out of 5 for type coverage. Speed control. There's no tailwind. Um... You have a pretty good Trick Room Setter in Masharna. You obviously have uh, Weather Control. Um, and like Perlon can T-Wave. Uh, Glalie can like Icy Wind. I think that the... I think uh, Clotzer can Icy Wind too. The Speed Control is here is, is good, but like not anything crazy. Um, spread Damage, Rock Slide... Kinda, it's kind of it. I mean, I know like Azov gets D Gleam, um, but you're not looking at much huge spread damage other than the Rock Slide. Um, so we'll probably throw like a two out of five there. Speed Tears. Um. Yeah, I mean twenty nine to one fifteen. Uh, I think that that's pretty solid. Uh, general vibe. I like the team a lot, um, but by general vibe, I'm just kind of looking at the team overall because uh, what my what my gut feeling on the team is, which you know maybe isn't the most accurate thing, but uh, I'd give it a four out of five gut. I, this is a team I I would probably like to use. Okay, you know what we're 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 just gonna do. So 6, 10, 12, 16, 20 out of how many possible points? Uh, 5 times 6, 30 total. Okay. So next up we're going to have Santa Scorch Gang. Okay, so Santa, uh, C-Rad, or Charles was one of our replacement coaches. So he picked up a team and made, I believe it was only three transactions to it. But uh, so uh, he is, I believe, I believe he's, so he technically has two losses here, but he didn't lose those. Uh, those were lost by the, the coach he replaced. Um, and then he, he won his, his game just, just earlier tonight. Uh, so he's got Dracovish, Moltres, Galar, Conkeldur, uh, Hiphaudon, Magmortar, Orangururu, uh, Crustal, Cryogonal, Mantine, Mawile, and Shiftree. So, let's see here. I like this team. I, I think there's some good value. Like, Mantine Tier 4 is a steal. Um, I don't mind Shiftree in Tier 5. Like, it's a decent... It's a decent fake out user, and that, that's pretty much it. But it's fine. Um, the sand. This is another sand core with a fossil sa uh, sand abuser. I I dig it. Um, Moltres is cool here. Um, I don't know if it's like. I mean, it's obviously in a non-max format. It doesn't feel quite as busted and like over and centralizing to me. But uh, I still like it. Like, it's not like it's bad here. Um, yeah, he's got a, a pretty good Trick Room setter. Uh, inner Focus Trick Room is nice. Um, I love, yeah, I love Mantine in, in non-max. Uh, I haven't used it in non-max. I used it in, in a max format. Um, but I think it's really great. Gets Tailwind. Uh, gets stuff like... Uh, uh, wide guard and, and haze and things like haze is probably not quite as useful in non-max but 
getting a wide guard, I think, is super valuable, even though he does have uh, Crustal as well. Um, does Conco, does Conkelder get it? I'm not, I don't remember. We're going to find out together. He does, okay. I couldn't remember. Um, so let's see. So for speed control here, uh, fast icy wind, um, good trick room setter. Uh, good tailwind setter uh, just, and weather on top of that. Um, it's probably a four. Type coverage here is great. Um, the the type cores here aren't super uh, cohesive. Like like they're not they don't stick uh, complement each other within the cores super well. Like Dracovish, Magmortar, Shift Tree, they just kind of are there together, which is fine. That it's not necessarily a terrible thing. Um, it looks like this. So this team also has kind of a rough fairy weakness, but uh, having. Yeah, I'm not sure. Your your only way to hit them is super effective is Maile, which is kind of rough. Um, Magmortar resists them at least, which is nice. Uh, but I'm not sure about that. Um, this is probably a four for type coverage. Power. So Dracovish is going to be hitting hard. I'm not sure about Moltres. Um, Conkeldur is going to hit hard. Other than that, though, I don't know. Like the 105, um, you know, 80. I, I'm not so sure about the initial power on this team uh, I think it's a little low um, not so low that it's like unfunctional non-functional but I think I'm, it's probably going to get a 3 because Dracovish is busted um, spread damage fiery wrath uh, earthquake and you, and you can earthquake next to Oranguru or Mantine or Cryogonal uh, Icy Wind uh Rock slides. Yeah, this 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 has good spread damage. Uh, it's not anything crazy. Uh, speed tiers. They're a little middling. Lowest is 45. Highest is 105. Um, but the speed control is good enough that I don't think it's a huge problem. Um, and general vibe. This team seems... It, it seems kind of awkward to me. Like, I'm not sure... Um, this doesn't feel like an autopilot team. I mean, I mean, it, it's hard because I can say that, but then also, like, Hippowd on Dracovish exists. And, like, Mantine setting Tailwind, exi like, for anything exists. So, like, it definitely... Huh. I think we have a three... Uh, 8, 11, 14, 17, 20. Wow, a tie. How? Okay, I see. Um, Alright, moving on. We have the Greedy Greninjas. Coached by Sasori. Uh, he has Urshifu, Rapid Strike, Heatran, Raikou, Serena, Gatharita, Noivern, Persian, Skuntank, Wigglytuff, Lunatone, and Piloswine. So, first off, um, the, I, the, I like this team a lot. Um, Persian is super great on this team. Like, having that fast fake out, as well as, like, man, okay. Uh, this team is better than I remember it being, actually. Uh, the Firewater Grass Core of Urshifu, Heatra, and Serena is, is crazy. I like that a lot. Um, combined with Noivern setting Tailwind for them, that is so good. Um, I think Raikou is a good, like, pivot mon. I, I think Inner Focus is really good in non-max formats, obviously. Um, as well as just having Serena to just deny Fake Out completely. Um... 
Yeah, I love Serena. Uh, so the team looks possibly a little Trick Room soft. Uh, like, bringing Trick Room into this team looks decently okay. Um, it's not an auto win because this team has a, rel has a pretty good damage output. Um, but, like... Okay, so because of that, I'm going to give the speed tiers a 4. Because 45 is, is low enough, um, in my opinion. But it'd be nice to maybe have one thing that hits a little harder on that slow side. Because um, you've got Wigglytuff, and then next thing up is Gotharita and Pillowswine. Like, it's fine. Like, base 100 is okay. Um, low tier value here is good. Um... Yeah, the, the fast mode on this team is insanely scary. Uh, I'm going to give it a 4. I'm only now giving it a 5 because... Um, well... I might give it a 5. Because I think Goth Gotharita is a really underrated Trick Room setter. Um, it, with Eviolite in a non-max format, it can live like basically anything. Um, I think that's good. Uh, having the two Frisk options uh, means you're not pigeonholing into using Frisk on Gotharita uh, if you're trying to find out information. Um, yeah, I, I dig this team. Um, the type coverage here, uh, Fantasy Core, uh, Firewater Grass Core, yeah, I, I like this a lot. Electric Ground Flying. Um, no Fighting type, but yeah. Oh, yeah, and yeah, this has like all like the textbook cores you, you would want on a draft team. Um, and they all work decently well together. Like Urshifu, Heatran, Serena work all nicely together under a Tailwind. Uh, Noivern, Wigglytuff, and Heatran also kind of... Because Wigglytuff can be under Tailwind. Um... Yeah, I, I like this a lot. I This might get a 5. Um, power here is good. Um, yeah, I mean, again, Heatran, Urshifu, Serena, Raikou, Noivern. Like, you, you have some good, some good damage output here. It's nothing crazy, but it's good. Um, spread damage, big heat waves from Heatran. Uh, you can discharge with Raikou next to Telepathy, Noivern, or Piloswine. Um, you can Earthquake with Piloswine next to Lunatone or Noivern. Uh, D-Gleams from Wigglytuff. Yeah, I think the spread damage is okay here. Uh, I'm going to give it a 3. Uh, yeah, Speed tiers, And then general, four, general Vibe, I love this team. This is like exactly the kind of team that I would I would draft uh, so that's 10 14 17 uh, 21 26 you guys are getting me to see me do quick maths here all right the handsome forest is up next coached by Haley uh, she has Rillaboom Zapdos Comfy Snorlax, Hitmonlee, Feeble, Behem, Perserker, Turtonator, Quagsire, and Vesperquen. So, okay, let's see. Huh, this is interesting. So, I obviously the grassy terrain um, with Comfy and with Hitmonlee and Feeble is great. I don't know if you need two Unburden users that are both tier 3. Um, I'm actually probably, I'm actually, I think I, I would be a decent proponent of dropping Thievul, um, potentially. They're both tier 3. I think Hitmonlee functions on its own better, because close combat is busted and not max. Um, as well as it can click coaching next to Rillaboom, and Berserker, and Snorlax. Uh, you have a decent amount of, and even Quagsire, you have a decent amount of, uh, coaching targets here. Um, you know, like, I like Snorlax here. I think she can probably get the Belly Drum up semi-consistently. Uh, having, 
three fake outs, one of them being Rillaboom, who can also just not fake out and just kill something. Um, I like that. Uh, speed control here is a little suspect to me. Um, Comfy and Behem being your Trick Room setters is fine. Um, Behem's bulk is okay, but nothing to write home about. Same for Comfy. I mean, Comfy's special defense is, is nuts, but um, it's still not... Like, I, do you want to dedicate a base 100 speed mod to setting Trick Room? I mean, obviously you can. There's certain matchups where that works. Um, but the speed control is a little suspect to me. Um, as well as the speed tiers. The slow end is nice. 30, 35, 36, 40, 50, um, another 40. Uh, but the high end only goes up to 100, and there's no tailwind. Um, so... Yeah, I the, the speed tiers and speed control here are not great. Um, type coverage. This team actually, like... I mean, the chart looks okay. Obviously, the chart doesn't mean a whole lot. Um... Type coverage here is fine. It's I don't think it's anything too special. Um, she does have the firewater grass, and again, like I I don't think that having a firewater grass core or a fantasy core is needed, but I think it's nice. Like it's it's always a plus in my opinion, uh, if if the core makes sense. Um, Comfy Berserker Turtonator is a fantasy core. Yeah, the, the type coverage here is fine. It's nothing special. Power is also fine. Um, spread damage is not great. You have Terminator Heat Waves. You have Hitmonlee Rock Slides. Zapdos Discharge, but you can't really click Discharge on this team, like, at all. Yeah, the, the spread damage here is bad. Um... And overall vibe is fine. I don't hate it. Uh, it's definitely, like... It's a couple transactions away from being really good. Um, I think if there's another Tailwind Setter in Tier 3, maybe drop Thievul for that Tailwind Setter. Um, that could be really solid. Um, but what's that? 5, 8, 9, 10, 13. Okay, next up we have Immortals Incinerator. Incinor oh, no. HK Blades. I can't read. It's late, guys. It's 11.30. Okay, HK Blades are up next, coached by Thunderball101. He's got Incin, Crobat, Nidoking, Tangrowth, Arctivish, Gardevoir, Silvalle, uh, Aurorus, Galvantula, Dublade, Throw. So, um, fast mode here is absolutely terrifying. Uh, setting Tailwind with Crobat is going to be so easy. Um... And, I mean, you have so much to benefit from Tailwind, as well as, like, Nidoking is, like, one of the m best mons in this format, in my opinion. As well as the budget Hail Core, and good Tier 5s, and throw in Dublades. Uh, they're not crazy, but they'll do the job. Um, I think... Um, the team doesn't love opposing Trick Room, um, but I, th I think it's okay. Uh, I'm going to give Speed Control a... a mm, I'm going to give Speed Control a 4. Crobat is insane. Um, plus you have the, the weather option. Um, yeah. Uh, type coverage is a 4. Power is probably also a 4, honestly. Because Nino King, Arctivish are hitting hard. Uh, everything else, I mean, Incineroar can hit hard. Um, huh. I'm probably going to give it a th 3 for power. Spread damage, you have Sludge Wave, Nino King. You can only really click it. Well, you can click it next to Gardevoir. 
You can click it next to Dublade. Uh, Blizzards from Aurorus. Or Arctivish. Um, Electroweb from Galvantula. Um, you can discharge next to Gardevoir or Nido King. Yeah, I like the spread. The spread damage here is good. Um, I should say like a three is good. Four is like above average. Five is like uh, insane. It, that's that's kind of how I'm looking at this. Um, speed tears. Thirty five to one thirty. They're all right. They're good. Um, nothing too, like, nothing too crazy, but, um, one problem I do see is, like, everything is middling between 35 and 130, like, everything's middling, like, you have 130, 108, and then, like, everything else is, like, 95, 80, like, 85, which is fine, because you have such a good Tailwind setter, but it's not, like, independently the fastest thing. Um, so I'll probably give three for speed tiers. General Vibe is a four. I like this team. Um, so that's eight, eleven, fourteen. Wait, eight, eleven, fourteen, seventeen, twenty-one. Okay, Immortals Incineration is up next. Man, I'm so tired, you guys. You have no idea. <laughs> Alright, Immortals Incinerations up next, coached by uh, Dez31. He's got Tapu Fini, Braviary, Rotom Heat, Sylveon, Dra Drampa, Lucario, Toracat, Fletchender, Frostmoth, Sceptile, and Carbink. Okay. So... It seems pretty good, I think. Um, I'm not sold on the Torcat too much, um, but other than that, uh, yeah, I'm also not sold on the Braviary actually. Um, it's a fine Tailwind Center, but you also have Fletchender, and I think that's probably just better. Also, Frostmoth might also be better in some matchups. Um, but Frostmoth is worth keeping if you even if you don't need Tailwind um, in some in, on certain teams. I think this team can can keep Frostmoth if it wants to. Um, hmm. Speed tiers here are not insane. You got Subtile at one twenty, and everything else is like in the eighties, pretty much. Um, Lucario hits ninety. But, like, Sceptile sucks. Um, Theo just popped off with it in Quillfish, but, I mean, this team doesn't support it that well. Um, there's just a lack of cohesiveness to me. Um, like, everything on here is, like, a, a good mon, really. Um, like, they all have their uses. I just don't see, like, the synergy. Like, Finny and Sceptile... Maybe I should have had a synergy category. That's probably what I should have done. Um, like, Finny and Sceptile, I, I see that. I see, like, Sylveon Quick Attack into Drampa, I guess. Uh, if you want to do, like, a, a weakness policy thing, um, which is obviously worse in non-max. I don't... Yeah, I, I just don't get some of the picks. Like, Braviary makes no sense to me here. Um, hmm. Speed control. Carbink being your trick room setter. Bravery being your tailwind setter isn't too appealing to me. Um, he does have three fire types. That I think it's fine. Um, they all kind of do their own thing. The rock weakness is pretty bad. Um, but... Yeah, you have like five rock weaknesses, two of which are four times. That is kind of rough. Um, is there a beat up here? Does Torcat get beat up? I don't think it does. So I don't see a beat up here. Uh, I could be missing one. Um, yeah, I'm not sold on this team, honestly. Uh, type coverage is a three. 
power three. <coughs> Spread damage. Got muddy waters. Got rack slide. Uh, electro web, which you can't really click on this team. Um, hyper voice. Hyper voice. Yeah, spread damage here is good. Uh, speed tiers are, are kind of bad. Um, general vibe. Uh, 5, 8, 11, 13, 14, 15, 16. All right. Moving on, we have the Ohio Oshawats, coached by SF Paul. So he's got Lando I, Winsicott, Indeedee Male, Zerkatry, Cobalion, Mr. Mime Galler, Kingler, Rapidash, Spiritomb, Garbodor, and Octillery. So this is a, a relatively hyper offensive team. Um, I love the Lando here. Lando is one of a phenomenal, um, like busted non max mon. I think it's good in max formats, but it's even more absurd in non max. Um, I like Mr. Mime here. Um, the Zerka tree, I'm not super sold on. Um, it's three and two right now. Um, I could be convinced on it though. He has like priority fake tiers. Um, he can like click discharge next to Lando. I think that's fine. Um, he has beat up for Cobalion. Uh, I, I dig Kingler as a low tier, a low tier water type, um, and Rapidash 2, uh, Spirit Tomb here is great value in tier 4, Garboder sucks, Octillery is fine, uh, I don't know if you need Octillery and Kingler, um, let's see though, Speed Control, obviously you have one of the best Tailwind Setters in the form, in the format, uh, your Trick Room setter looks a little suspect. I mean, this team isn't really ever setting Trick Room. Um, it wants to deny Trick Room, so Indeedy is good for that, um, as well as having, a, uh, you know, Mr. Mime to fake out um, as well. Speed Control's fine here. I think just having Whimsicott makes, get, makes it good. Honestly, uh, type coverage here is, is good. Um, power is definitely high. Um, I mean, like just the raw off base offensive stats here are pretty good. Um, 130, 100, 105, 105, 173, 105, 115, 125. Uh, Indeed, he's going to uh, be able to get expanding forces off Mr. Mime benefits from that base 90 special attack expanding forces do not feel good um, uh, speaking of which spread damage here pretty good Lando rock slides hurt Lando uh, sludge waves hurt um, expanding forces hurt discharge hurts um, you can't click discharge a ton on this team really only next to Lando uh, but when you were able to, it seems pretty good. Let me go four. Uh, speed twos here seem good. Um, I wish there was maybe something a little slower, because, I mean, Spirit Tomb is a nice, like, disruptive mon. Um, yeah, okay. We're gonna give four for general vibes, so, uh, D. 4, 8, 12, 16, uh, 20, 23. All right, Phoenix Jolts are up next. Coached by uh, Pokert. He's got Celesteela, Dragapult, Suicune, Aromatis, Sneasel, Tauros, Decidueye, Flareon, Manectric, Toxicroak, and Sandslash. This also, I think this team also looks pretty good. Um... I, I dig the, uh, 
actually don't see what Sneasel does here in particular. Um, but other than that, I mean, great Trick Room Setter, uh, great Tailwind Setter. So the speed control here is great. Um, Celesteel is great. I am saying great a lot, um, but I think the team is good. Uh, I think Tauros and Non-Max is pretty great. Having Sheer Force boosted, Body Slams, Rock Slide, Zen Headbutt, Iron Head, I think probably Crunch, other things like that, I think that's good. Um, Flareon is fine enough, Decidueye is fine enough. Uh, yeah, the low tiers in general are, are good. Um, I wouldn't say Sand Slash is anything to write home about, but... Um, Yeah, I think this team is good. Uh, 142, 115, 110, 105. The fast end is great, and then you have Aromatist to uh, work under Trick Room. It gets after you, so that's also good, some good speed control. Um, yeah, we're going to throw a 4 on speed control. Type coverage seems good. Power seems... Also good, maybe a little lower, um, but but good. Spread damage here looks a little non-existent. I guess I mean dragon darts, uh, rock slides, earthquakes, which you can't really click on this team, other than next to Celestila. Yeah, spread damage is a little weak. Um, speed tiers are good. General vibe is good. Uh, so 8, 11, 13, 17, 20. We have another 20. All right, Poke Kickers are up next. Coached by Freyor. Uh, they have Lando T, Tapu Koko. Blastoise, Corviknight, Raichu, Alola, Salazzle, Lapras, Sock, Zoroark, Lantern, and Shedinja. Okay. So my the first thing I noticed, and this is probably a weird thing for it's probably weird that I noticed this first. But oh, I'm sorry guys. I'm yawning. I'm tired. Uh Lantern is like really weird here. Also, Shedinja's like not a real Pokemon. Uh, I've, I've never been convinced otherwise. Um, okay, so... Let's see here. So, Lando is good. Um, it's a shame that this team has so many ground weaknesses. Because you really want to be clicking Earthquakes with Lando, and you it's kind of hard to do that on this team. Um... Yeah, like, I mean, you can do it in X to Corviknight, and that's it. Um, I like the Coco Raichu lead, uh, or core. It's fine. I don't think it's... I haven't, I've never seen the Raichu Alola do too, too great. Um, but it's probably not bad here. Um, Blastoise... Feels like you might not get it set up. Um... So I'm not one. I'm not one to say that like even though I have been talking about cores a lot, um, and like the standard textbook type cores, um, I'm not one to be like, oh, you absolutely must have Firewater Grass and Fantasy on every team or it's bad. But my and I don't even and I'm not even one who thinks overlapping typings on a team is bad necessarily. But my issue comes in when not when defenses start to overlap or not overlap. It's with the offensive output because when you start to have three electric types three water types you're basically i mean you're you're using your your slots on your team to hit the same things um and to me you then you then you're then giving up things you can hit you can't hit as much if half your mons are the same typings you know the same two typings um but you know you have some two really fast fake outs um, Sock is fine. 
I think Zoroark is pretty cool in non-max. For tier 4, it's probably good value. Uh, sh again, Shedinja's not real. Speed tiers are, f are pretty good. Nothing slow. Um, spread damage. Like, yeah, you again, you have Earthquakes here, but you can't really click it on this team. You can only click it next to Corviknight. And I guess Shedinja. If you want to do that. I don't know why, but you could. Um, yeah, I also don't know, like... I don't think the team can get Blastoise set up. Uh, there's a Tailwind Setter, no Trick Room, which is probably okay. Um, but you also don't, you don't need a Trick Room Setter. I feel like this team would like to have something that scares away opposing Trick Room. Um, Corviknight being your only speed control. I mean, I mean, Tapu Koko gets Electro Web. Uh, Blastoise and Lapras get Icy Wind, so... It's not like the only, only thing, but uh, it's fine. Uh, type coverage is probably a two. Power looks fine enough. Spread damage is like good, but not. I mean, you have Telepathy Coco. Uh, I don't like the general vibe here. Uh, five, eight... 11, wait, 5, 8, 11, 14, 15. Okay, Rally Rapidash are up next. Uh, so, they, this is coached by Alligator. Sorry, just getting some water. <laughs> um... He has Indeedee, Female, Volcarona, Rotom Wash, Arctazolt, Halucha, Machamp, Umbreon, Obama Snow, Rapidash Galar, Ninjask, and Skarmory. This is an interesting team. Um, I don't know if I like it. Um, the double redirection feels unnecessary, but you can always, you know... Lead them both and then set up with Volcarona. Um, yeah, I, I I like Halucha here. Um, I don't think Machamp is needed. Uh, I don't I don't know if Rotom Wash is the ideal water type here, but it's fine for what it is doing. Um, yeah, this the budget hail feels okay. Uh, yeah, I don't hate this. I don't hate it. Um, I don't love it. Seems like in DD Mail has a lot of kills. Arctiv Arctazolt too. I'm a huge Arctazolt believer. I love that thing. Um, I think... Am I... Okay, I, I, I just had to check my mic because if I had to re-record re re this again, I was going to cry. Um, okay, so back to the team. Uh, you know, Indeedee's nice. Yeah, actually, no, I, I like Indeedee because it supports this team really well. Um, it's going to allow Halucha to get the Unburdened boost and then maybe set up a Swords Dance pretty safely. Um, it's going to allow Rotom Wash and Volcarona to set up Quiver Dance uh, and uh, Nasty Plot, respectively. Um, the budget hail mode is a nice little prep point that you have to you have to take care of. Um, Machamp feels useless here to me. Um, that could probably go in my opinion. Umbreon's a nice defensive option. Uh, Rapidash is a fine low tier value pick, although could probably be something better. But having a low tier fairy like that is not bad. Um, Ninjask and Skarmory both suck. Uh, Skarmory, I guess, is okay. Ninjask is terrible. Um, speed stats are, are, are good. Um, they don't go super low, but they go high enough. Obviously, the 160 is, like, not real. Um, speed control... 
Does Halucha still get Tailwind? Okay, I didn't think so. There's no Tailwind here, no Trick Room here. Um, Electroweb from Rotom. That's kind of it. Okay, speed control is not there. Um, type coverage is fine. Initial power is not super high, but um, with setup, which this team can easily do, I think the power level is good. Um, spread damage is going to be good. Uh, run and wash Electro Web, uh, expanding forces. Heat waves from Volcarona are gonna hit like a truck. Uh, Obama Snow Blizzards, Arc Dissolved, potentially Blizzards if you want. Um, yeah, the spread damage here is good. Um, speed tiers are are okay. General vibes are okay. So four, eight, twelve, uh, eighteen. Okay, rolled gold pretzels, uh, coached by Gumi. What's up next? So Gumi has. Ente, Gyarados, Latios, Tapu Bulu, Bisharp, Togedemaru, Kursala, Dredigan, Executor, Alola, Type Null, and Pseudo Wudo. So, I like this team. Uh, Latios is a great Tailwind setter. Um, Executor is a fine enough Trick Room setter. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, I have spring allergies. And they have not left me for like two weeks now. Um, it'd be nice to see the team take more advantage of the grassy terrain, but it, I think I'm fine without it. Um, just having that in that tier two is uh, value for Tapu Bulu seems okay. Huh, yeah, this is an interesting team. I, I like the Bisharp. Um... I've seen Token Tomorrow do do want work wonders in non max. Um, I think. Yeah, I mean Ente is is insanely good. Latios, like the the power here is is really high. Um, the power is probably a four. The spread damage looks a little lacking. Yeah, team's got no spread damage. Pretty much none. Unless I'm missing something like Dredigan Rock Slides, um, Tapu Bulu Rock Slides, Entei Eruption? I guess I can give it a two. Because Eruption is real. Uh, speed tiers are, yeah, speed tiers are great. Um, this team doesn't really want to set Trick Room, but Cursula with 145 special attack and 30 speed is going to hugely threaten anything uh, that is like any opposing Trick Room team. So I really, really like that dynamic. Um, yeah, speed control is good. Type coverage is, is great. Um, speed tiers are good. Honestly, speed tiers are phenomenal. Um, yeah, I like this team a lot. 9, 13, uh, 15, 20, 24. Yeah, the only th the, I think the only thing here it's lacking in is the spread damage. Uh, so, finally, we have the Sussex Sableyes, coached by Ruby T. He has Tornadus Eye, Urshifu Single Strike, Mamoswine, Togetic, Mesprit, Weezing, Gre Greedent, Pikachu, Vileplume, Heatmore, and Whiskash. Okay, so these bottom three scream. I felt like I needed a firewater grass course, so I just grabbed these three crappy low tiers. And they're fine. Like, they're not terrible. Um, Greedent next to Togetic can probably get the belly drum off decently, consistently enough. Um... Yeah, uh, a torn torn is probably is like one of the top two or three tailwind setters in this format. Um, good redirection. 
Trick Room looks a little scary, but Mesprit is a good Trick Room setter. Um, and, well, Greedin is base 20, so leading, even like Togetic Greedin lead is, is scary for opposing Trick Room teams. Uh, speed Control is probably a 4. No, nah, Speed Control is a 5. Uh, yeah, Tornadus and Mesprit is a great pairing there. Um, let's see. Type coverage is good. Power is okay. Yeah, your heavy hitters are like Urshifu and Mamo and Tornadus. Uh, everything else is probably going to do middling damage. I mean, Vile Plume is, is good, but no Sun feels a little odd. Um, I'll give it a 3. Spread damage. You have quite a few partners for Mammoth Swine to click EQ next to. You have Heat Waves from Tornadus. You have Electro Webs from Pikachu. That's kind of it. D Gleams from Togetic, which don't really count. Uh, spread damage is weaker side of okay uh, speed tears are fine and general vibe is okay so 9 12 15 19 22 okay so um looks like then if we if we put these in order here I'm sorry, this is scuffed, guys. I I apologize. Uh, looks like the highest is Greedy Greninjas. Uh, let me... Uh, sorry. Okay. So Greedy Greninjas with 26. Uh, and then Rolled Gold Pretzels with 24. And then Ohio Oshawott's. 23. 22. Huh. Uh, HK Blades, man, this is so scuffed, I'm sorry, uh, we have 320s, oh boy, uh, do we have we have a 16 a 13 and 18 okay 18 raleigh rapidash and then we have a 16 15 13 16 is the immortals and the Okay, kickers and the handsome forest. All right. Well, these there are the power rankings. I uh, I know this is kind of a, a weird format. Um, I know this is a kind of scuffed video in general. How long has this been? Almost an hour. Okay. Um, I figured we'd wrap up by looking at the rankings. Uh, as well as the leagues. Uh, we'll look at the kill leaderboards and stuff after this. Uh, looks like we've got two undefeated teams left, and they are playing each other next week. Uh, so that, that looks like it'll be a fun 
match to follow because uh, only one will come out next week with a four zero record. Um, other than that, you know, I mean, it's a pretty even split, obviously, as it's going to be early this early in the season. Uh, looking at the kill leaderboards, yep, Titar is on top. Uh, you know, these are all mods you'd probably expect. Sweetman with seven is is surprising, but not. Uh, obviously, the mod is really good. Um, yeah, uh, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Uh, I'm I'm sorry this this took so long to get to you guys. Uh, I have had quite the the interesting past couple of weeks, but uh, hopefully this satisfies you guys. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or any uh, want to have any want any suggestions uh, for your teams or anything, uh, feel free to DM me. And thanks for watching, everyone.